Hey everybody, Happy New Year's to all of you. I know it's New Year's Eve day today and uh, I know this is a time of year where we're all thinking about the new year that's coming and uh, more than likely thinking about uh, new year, new me, uh, maybe I'm going to do new exercise routine or new diet or new Bible reading program or any kind of thing. Uh, and the thing about most New Year's resolutions is they don't really last very long. And uh, I consider myself to be relatively self-disciplined, but I, I've started many things thinking this is my year for it and uh, eventually fizzled out the end of January, middle of February. So, uh, you know, this year uh, I don't really want to come at you from that vantage point like I'm we're going to do this, or we're going to stop doing that. Uh, so instead of focusing on what we do or what we don't do, uh, I'm going to take a few minutes now and let's focus on how we actually look at things. And the title of my message is, It's All in How You See It. It's all in how you see it. And so I've been teaching out of my book, Think River, Not Pie, came out in September, and uh, just teaching lessons out of it, life lessons that have helped me uh, in my journey on earth. And I want to read one of the chapters to you right now and talk about a few ideas about uh, how you view things and your perspective on life, your perspective on yourself and the world and God and all the things. So I wrote this down. You find what you're looking for, so make sure you're looking for the right things. If we're in a room and I ask you to look for brown things or blue things, you're going to find what you're looking for just because you're taking the time to notice them, just because you started looking for them, looking for something brown or looking for something blue. If you start looking for what's wrong in a situation or in a person, you're going to end up finding it. But if you'll start looking for what's right in a situation or what's right in a person, you'll find that as well. We all possess a thing called a reticular activating system. It's that idea uh, when you decide you want to buy a white Honda or a red Toyota, all of a sudden you start seeing them everywhere. And so uh, it's the way we're wired. Your brain and your ability to notice starts picking up on the things that you have decided you want to notice, the things that uh, you are actually looking for. So I just want to encourage you as you move into 2024, make sure you're looking for reasons and not excuses. Make sure you're looking for positive and not negative. Make sure you're looking for things to be grateful for rather than things that are wrong. Uh, make sure you're looking for the upside and not the downside. Uh, <clears throat> make sure you're looking for the way forward rather than why things can't go forward for you. Make sure you're look looking for reasons to believe rather than reasons to doubt. You'll never live a positive life with a negative mindset. You'll never live a positive my life with a negative viewpoint on life. So here's the way Jesus taught this concept. A couple passages. Uh, Matthew 6, verse 22, Jesus taught this. The eye is the lamp of the body. If your eye is clear, if the way you see is clear, your whole body will be full of light. Uh, but if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. And in a really telling statement, Jesus says, if the light that's in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? Uh, I like the way Mark Twain kind of phrased an idea built around that. Mark Twain said, it ain't what you don't know that gets you in trouble. It's what you know for sure that really ain't so. So if the light that's in you is actually wrong, then it's going to hard to, it's going to be hard for you to get anything right. 
another passage where Jesus taught this, Luke 11, verse 34, the eye is the lamp of your body. When your eye is clear, your whole body is full of light. But when your eye is bad, your whole body is full of darkness. Watch out that the light in you is not darkness. If therefore your whole body is full of light with no dark part in it, it will be wholly illumined as when the lamp illumines you with its rays. So Jesus was teaching often about this concept, a good eye or a bad eye. Your eye is how you see it, how you look at it. What is your vision? What is your perspective? What is your outlook? What is your paradigm? Uh, what is the lens you view things through? Uh, you know, there's a lot of different lenses that we can use to, to view things. I remember uh, several years ago, quite a few years ago, uh, I was talking with one of my office mates and uh, just picked up a pair of glasses that they had on the counter, put them on just for fun, and all of a sudden realized, wow, this is what seeing clearly really looks like. And so I put those glasses on, and all of a sudden I realized, oh my gosh, I need a new lens to view things from. I need a new way to be able to see things, because then I'd be able to see. I didn't even know I wasn't seeing clearly until I actually put those glasses on. Um, and then, uh, you know, sometimes we, we have the lens of sunglasses, right? It's bright outside. We put on our sunglasses, uh, and it helps us view things well. Some people wear sunglasses all the time. They wear them outside. They wear them inside. I think if you're wearing them inside all the time, you can end up tripping over something. So they work in a situation. They don't work in other situations. It's just a lens that you can view from. It's a lens you can put on how you view things. Um, here's a little magnifying glass. Every once in a while now, uh, this is my wife's magnifying glass. We got to pull this out to read small print to read fine print, need a little help to be able to see things. So, um, so the idea of what are the lens that you're looking through determines really how well you're going to see, what you're going to see, what you're not going to be able to see. So if you don't have the right lens, who knows? I mean, you know, if the light that's in us is darkness, uh, we live a life full of uncertainty because we're not seeing clearly. Uh, we can live a life of insecurity or hesitation, maybe a life uh, full of fearfulness, uh, missing out on what is going on around us. Uh, maybe great people coming into our life, great things coming into our life, but the wrong lens, the wrong, the wrong view is going to make us miss it. And, you know, you know what happens when you can't see clearly, you know, when you get up in the middle of the night and you go to the bathroom and you're coming back, you walk so slowly because you can't see. It's dark. And you need to be able to see to move forward. So there, there could be things that, that beautiful things that are right in front of us, but we can't see them if we don't have the right lens on. Uh, one of my statements that I've lived by for so long that has helped me is the idea is you don't see the world as it is. You see the world as you are. And my favorite illustration for that is, you know, three guys are walking up to a wheat field and one of them is an artist and he sees the beautiful picture and wants to paint a picture. One of them is a farmer, sees the wheat field and is calculating how many barrels of wheat, bushels of wheat, how much wheat can get harvested out of this. And then the other guy is a developer. It's like, let's wipe out this wheat field. Let's build an apartment complex. Let's build houses on this. So three different people looking at the same thing, different lens, seeing it a whole different way. And what I've discovered too is we don't always see the world as it is, but as we are. But I think often we don't even see the Word of God as it is. We see the Word of God as we are. So we end up 
creating our own world based on how we see the world. So a lot of times if you sit in front of the news over and over and over again, you're going to get fed information that is going to uh, cause fear to rise inside of you. And the truth is the news is only giving you their angle on what they want to talk about. And they're not really giving you the truth about all of life. There's so many other great things that could be going on in life and that are going on in life. But if you're just viewing through the lens of the regular newscast, you could put, be putting a lens of fear on your life. I think, honestly, I think the media is as much to blame for the economic issues and all some of the things that we're facing in our society today because they, they have to focus on negative things. They have to focus on problems with the economy, problems with the government, problems with whatever you want to go. I remember when I was a high school kid and I was working in a grocery store and then late night TV, uh, the big guy was Johnny Carson. He did the Tonight Show and he was, he was the leader of the pack in that time. And he made this joke about uh, how we were running out of toilet paper. It was just a joke. That's all it was. But I worked in a grocery store and to watch people respond to his joke, they, they literally, people came into our grocery store the next day bought everything, wiped everything out. We were completely out of toilet paper in the store just from a joke that Johnny Carson told about running out of toilet paper. The fear, looking at life through the lens of fear, actually created a shortage when there really wasn't one. So all of us see things from our perspective. We all take the picture of life from our angle. And my encouragement to you today is that we want to make sure that our perspective is lining up with God's perspective. We're not just bringing our perspective, but we're trying to find out what is God's perspective. Isaiah 55 verse 8 says, My thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. And we all want to be practicing this idea. I'm exchanging my lower thoughts for his higher thoughts. Higher thoughts lead to higher ways. Higher perspectives lead to a higher lifestyle. We, we all see what we're looking for. We all see things out of the perspective, out of whether we're putting on the glasses, the magnifying glass, the, the sunglass, whatever lens we put on, we see what we're looking for. And as I said earlier, uh, if, we're, if you say, I'm looking for something blue, you find it because you're, now you're looking for it. If I'm looking for something red, you'll find it because now you're looking for it. So if you're looking for admirable qualities in your spouse, uh, your kids, your friends, your church, your city, your work, well, if you're looking for the good things, you'll find the good things if you're looking for them. But if you're looking for the things that are wrong with your spouse or your kids, or your church, or your work, or your city, or the economy, or whatever, you're going to find them. So let's put on the kind of lens that help us see things. Let's put on the lens of abundance. Let's make sure we're looking through the eyes of abundance. Let's put on the lens of love, where we are caring for people, and wanting to love people, and looking for ways to bring love to people. Put on the lens of mercy, toward people, not the lens of judgment. Put on the lens of opportunity, knowing that there's all kinds of opportunity available to, to all of us. Put on the lens of faith. Put on the lens of God makes all things work together for our good. Put on the lens of joy. Find reasons to rejoice. Put on the lens of generosity and not the lens of stinginess. Because when we, when we see things the right way, 
in the way that God wants us to see them, we're, our life is going to be so, so much better. But if our perspective is, uh, is of lack, uh, it's of, if it's selfish, if our perspective is judgmental or fearful or guarded, then we are literally creating our world out of how we see it. You, your eye, your perspective is, the Bible says, a lamp. The lamp lights up the whole room. Proverbs 20, verse 27 says, The spirit of man is the lamp of the Lord. The spirit of a man, not just his head, but the spirit of a man is the lamp of the Lord, searching all the innermost parts of his being. Your spirit knows things that your head has not caught up with yet. Your spirit knows things, senses things, anticipates things, catches on to things more than your head knows. And so your inner man has eyes to see that your natural man does not be able to see. We walk by faith, the Bible says, not by sight. Our GPS that determines decisions and direction for our life is an inward thing, not just an outward thing. And by that I mean we're, we view circumstances through a faith lens rather than viewing faith through a circumstance lens. We don't react just to circumstances. We act out of faith. So let me read these uh, verses that Jesus is talking about. And this is from the message now. Matthew 6, 22 says, Your eyes are windows into your body. If you open your eyes wide in wonder and belief, your body fills up with light. If you live squinty-eyed in greed and distrust, your body is a, a, a dank cellar. If you pull the blinds on your windows, what a dark life you'll have. Wow, that's a pretty clear picture. Open up your eyes in wonder. Open up your eyes in belief. So say to yourself, I wonder what great things God has in store for me today, for me, this year. I wonder where the next turn of God's favor is going to show up in my life. I wonder who God is going to allow me to help or me to bless today or this year. I wonder what opportunity, new opportunity, is going to come my way. I wonder what I'm going to learn today. I wonder what great new person I'm going to meet today. Open up your eyes in wonder and belief. I wonder what good things God has planned for me because the Bible says he does have great things planned for you. I wonder what blessings are in the heart of God for, for my life. I wonder what God will do in my kids, in my children this year. That viewpoint lets faith come in, lets hope come in, lets confidence come in to life. Uh, Luke 11 in the message uh, verse 34 says this, Your eye is a lamp lighting up your whole body. If you live wide-eyed in wonder and belief, your body fills up with light. If you live squinty-eyed in greed and distrust, your body is a dank cellar. Keep your eyes open, your lamp burning, so you don't get musty and murky. <laughs> That's a good way to look at it. Don't get musty, don't get murky. Keep your life as well lighted as your best lighted room. So we're talking about the principle of perspective. We're talking about it's all in how you see it. And I just want to finish up with just a few ideas to, for us to think about today. Number one is this. Everybody has a perspective, but not everybody has a good one. Come on, social media has definitely let us know that everybody has an opinion about things that they don't really have any qualification to have an opinion on, right? Everyone has a take on things. Everyone has a perspective. And you have an opinion. I have an opinion. Uh, we each have perspectives that, that we bring. And we got to realize that everybody has a, a perspective, but not everybody has a great perspective. In other words, there are people that are good to you, but they may not be good for you. 
They don't carry. So you, you, wouldn't, you want to surround yourself with people who have good eyes, who see clearly, who see right, who see biblically, who see in a godly way. You, you wouldn't pick a blind person to drive you to the restaurant, so why pick a blind person to do life with? So understand that. Number two, your first perspective may not always be the best perspective. You know, stuff happens. Sometimes our first reaction, sometimes our first perspective, somebody said something, somebody's done something, somebody hasn't done something. I remember one time I was driving in traffic right on Smoky Park Highway, and I saw a, a guy driving a pickup truck, and a lady was trying to cross over, and she kind of waved at him and just assumed that he was going to let her in. Well, he wasn't, and she came in front of him, and he just drove into her, and I'm thinking, why ruin your day? I mean, just, just to be, you're not going to let her break in before you. Uh, sometimes you get cut off in traffic, and you're, you're whatever. You don't know what's going on. Let me say this. We all try to get everybody else to see our perspective. But I think to, if we're going to be wise about life, we've got to recognize some of your perspective is right, but some of your perspective is wrong. And the idea isn't just, let's get everybody to see my perspective. The idea is, let's make sure we find the best perspective. Make sure we find a God is a good God. God's going to work it out. We're, we're going we're to triumph in this situation. That's a good perspective. Uh, idea number three is this. Pick your perspective based on what you want out of life. You got to work to find the right angle to view whatever's going on in your world. To, to look at your job, your family, your finances, your friends, everything that's going on in your life. I remember several years ago reading uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And I don't know if I follow all of the ideas in that book. But I thought it was an interesting book because he had one dad who was the poor dad who had a kind of a poverty mentality about everything. It's the way he looked at everything. But then he had a, 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 a friend's dad who he called his rich dad who had an abundance mentality. And it, and it flavored everything that he saw, different perspectives from different dads. So I'm going to say this, you can't grow your life financially if you keep a poor perspective. Poor is an attitude. And if you, if you, you stay poor, if you think poor. So you got to make sure you change that lens and understand what do you want out of life? If you want this, here's one thing that I've always held to. Uh, here's a perspective. As for me and my house, we are going to serve the Lord. Uh, it doesn't matter if uh, we went to church and it wasn't exactly what we wanted. It doesn't matter if a Christian said something or did something that we didn't like. We weren't, I'm not going to bail on God because my perspective is, as for me and my house, we are going to serve the Lord. So having good eyes, having a good perspective, looking at your blessings and making a big deal out of it. Make, make a, do this. Start looking for the blessing that's in your life. Make a big deal out of the blessings that are in your life. Make a list if you have to. Blow up your blessings. You know, make a big deal about God in your life. Make God big in your world. You can, you can shrink God's place in your world or you can make God's place big in your world. And so we all have this option. We can either make our blessings big in our world or we can make our problems big because everybody has some blessing in their life Everybody has some problem in their life. And what you magnify grows in your life. Psalm 34 says this, Magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Uh, effective prayer, prayer, effective living, always starts with the bigness of God. Magnify the Lord and not with the bigness of the problem. I'm always encouraging you guys, and I have to keep encouraging myself. 
Pray the promise, not the problem. You can make your problems big or you can make your problems small. And, and perspective is so important. Instead of looking at God from your problem and saying, God, why are you doing this or why aren't you doing this? How about getting where you are seated with Christ in heavenly places and looking at your problem from the place that God has put you in? Magnify God in your life. Don't minimize God in your life. Magnify God. God's big. He's wise. He's powerful. He's, he's merciful. He's generous. He's loving. He's good. He's creative. He's a way maker. Like, get focused and, and magnify the Lord in your life. When David encountered Goliath, everybody else saw Goliath as someone who was big, but David was the one who saw God. As big. Psalm 69, verse 30 says this I will praise the name of God with song and magnify him with thanksgiving. Great perspective starts with thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is just stopping to locate the positives in your world. So magnify him with thanksgiving. And then the last idea that I want to give you. It's all in how you see it is this. Always be willing to change your perspective. You got to anchor your values, but then you got to position your perspective uh, built out of the right kind of values. These, uh, these glasses right here are some of my earlier glasses that I used to wear years ago. The style doesn't fit me anymore. And even the prescription doesn't fit me anymore. These, this is an old lens. It's an old view. It's, it's how I was looking at things and seeing them clearly 20 years ago. But now I would want to see things different. I want to see things right. I want to grow in my way of seeing things. So, so listen, don't get stuck defending a perspective that doesn't fit you anymore or a, or a perspective that is limiting your life. Because some people just, they, they stop growing at some point. And, you know, they're, they, they think it's almost faithfulness to go, well, this is the way I've always seen it. This is the way I have used to see it. But, I, but what I want to say is keep growing in your perspective. Let's, let's continue to grow in our viewpoint. Let's continue to grow in how we look at, at things. Snap the picture of the life you want. Snap the picture of the life that you believe God wants you to have and then put that in front of you and focus your, your thinking. Find an angle. Find a perspective that works with where you are right now. Hey, I want to take a minute and just pray with you guys. Uh, I think the ability to see clearly, the ability to see well, the ability to see with God lens, if you will, biblical lens, is so vital. So can we just take a moment to pray right now? Father, thank you for every person that's having the opportunity to hear these ideas, to hear from your word. I'm praying that you will help us see more clearly than we've ever seen before. In Jesus' name, amen. Believing for you guys to have an incredible 2024.